Nicolas Cage is an actor as eccentric as they come, and he's had the homes to match. From mansions in Las Vegas to haunted mansions in New Orleans, and even his very own island in the Bahamas, it doesn't stop there. Nick also went on to buy some real life castles, reportedly three from the US to Europe. And while the actor will be playing Dracula in an upcoming film, none of them were in Transylvania, unfortunately. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Nicholas Coppola, known to us all as Nicholas Cage, is an actor and filmmaker born into the Coppola family. He's received many awards over his storied career, including an Academy Academy Award, Golden Globe, and more. He's also established a track record for being quite eccentric, but he's kept things interesting over the years, both in his film roles and in reality. While recently we're still pinching ourselves that Nick playing Dracula is a real thing, doesn't it just suit the man perfectly? Photos from the horror comedy movie Renfield prove that soon we'll be seeing Nick in action as the famed vampire. Nick never really went anywhere, but these days he seems to have resurfaced the last few years Years, and there is a bit of a Nicolas Cage renaissance happening, likely beginning with his chainsaw slaying lead performance in the artsy horror flick Mandy. Then last year was the well reviewed film Pig, along with a handful of others. While there may be another reason why we have seen Nick in so so many movies over the last few years, he was reportedly taking film roles left and right in order to pay off his remaining debt, which he had managed to do finally by 2022. While he was worth $25 million by 2017, Nick went on a bit of a real estate shop spree which started around the early 2000s. From an island in the Bahamas to haunted mansions and castles in England and Germany, the man kept going. Ultimately, Nick had to hand his extravagant properties right back to the banks after he hit a major financial setback in the late 2000s. Considering the actor has owned a staggering amount of homes over the years, it would take far too long to go over them all, but we'll check out some of the most interesting ones. Hey guys, it's Kara back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Interview. Entertainment today, looking at some of the most notable Nicolas Cage homes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. In 2021, a stunning San Francisco property once owned by Nick Cage hit the market. Located in the dizzying heights of San Fran, overlooking none other than Alcatraz, Nick snagged this home in 2006 for $9.4 million. Sadly, he had to sell it at a loss in July 2008 for $7.7 .7 million, so he never got much time to enjoy the place. Recently, it's returned to the market again, but this time with a price tag of $10.95 million. And for that price, you get quite the stunning Tudor estate, which is actually over 100 years old, boasting a ton of history and decorated in a pristine gothic style. The period home covers four levels, all overlooking San Francisco Bay. While Nick was living here, he could enjoy the open plan main floor with sprawling foyer and classic staircase, as well as the nearby formal living and dining room. There is also a grand library, powder room, and eating kitchen that connects to the garage on this level. Other features of this property include gothic stonework on the exterior, and original details like stained glass windows, ornate molding, and cozy custom fireplaces. Now let's move on to Nevada, a state where the actor seems to spend a lot of time. Nick purchased this mansion in Las Vegas, Nevada for $8.5 million a few years before he got into his financial troubles. This two-story house boasts over 14,000 square feet of space, seven bedrooms, and 10 bathrooms. There are also multiple fireplaces, a pool, a sauna, a home theater, a garage big enough for over a dozen vehicles, granite countertop, both marble and stone flooring, as well as views of the city. I mean, what more could you want? But Nick didn't live here all that long. Since then, the house has passed hands a number of times, and every time it hits the market, it's described as Nicolas Cage's ultimate Vegas estate, which I would say pretty accurately sums this place up. One of Nick's most on-brand purchases was this mansion that he bought in New Orleans. Why is this one so special? Well, because it's haunted, of course. Widely considered the most haunted house in America due to its history as the lair of one of the 19th century's most prolific serial killers, Madame Delphine LaLaurie, a Louisiana socialite known to torture and murder her slaves in the French district of the Big Easy. 
Besides being a torture palace, over its 181 years of history, this 10,000 square foot mansion has been chopped up and put back together at least half a dozen times and has served as a private residence, an all girls school, a furniture store, a rental apartments, a homeless shelter, and then back to a private residence. In terms of features, this home has three floors and a ton of amazing architectural detailing, elaborate ceiling medallions, carved doors, Greek columns, and even intricate winged angels in the dining room. After a fire in 1834, when the horrific truth of what Madame Lalaurie had been up to in here was discovered, the mansion became a French Quarter landmark. Today it remains a gold mine for ghost tours, but that didn't stop Cage from scooping this place up in 2007 for $3.4 million. Unfortunately, he then had to promptly sell it less than two years later at a foreclosure auction. Now, let's talk about Nick's infamous castle. He kicked things off by picking up this 1928 castle in the hills of the Los Feliz district of Los Angeles, which according to records was once gutted in a fire, only to have Cage totally renovate the interior and install purple velvet fabric wall coverings and Egyptian inspired stenciling on the ceiling. This private and secluded residence also features wood paneled walls, a wine room, and a circular library, along with spectacular views of downtown LA. But American castles aren't all that Nick's owned over the years. In fact, he's also owned a couple of castles over on the OG castle continent, Europe. Cage went through a period in his life where all he was doing was meditating three times a day and reading books on philosophy and so he found himself seeking out the places which he had studied and read about, he told Vanity Fair. I started following mythology and I was finding properties that aligned with that. Nick's quest for the Holy Grail led him all the way to England where he picked up two European castles, one for $10 million and the other for $2.3 million. The estates were reportedly located in Bath, England as well as Etzelwang, Germany. Needless to say, with his subsequent financial difficulties, he has since moved off the properties. All right, guys, I think that's going to bring us to an end of the Nicolas Cage house tour. It was an exhaustive list, and as I mentioned, he also even bought his very own 40 acre island in the Bahamas back in 2006, but he had to give that back too. Well, I know one thing that you guys must be thinking all these houses are super cool, but where does Nick? Well, I know one thing you guys must be thinking all these houses are super cool, but where does Nick live now? It seems like these days, Cage lives lives in two different places, Nevada and Glastonbury in England. He has a place somewhere nearby the Mojave Desert after moving there nearly a decade ago and then over in Glastonbury he owns a cottage that he fell in love with while on his search for the Holy Grail. Well, don't forget to let me know what you guys thought about Nick's wild properties in that comment section. Thanks for watching, follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!